Now, it's a big moral dilemma. Would you choose the genes of your unborn child? A report by the Nuffield Council on Bioethics has concluded that it's morally permissible to do so. And that could open, of course, the door to so-called designer babies with things like eye colour and height selected by their parents. So what do we think about this? I'll come to you, Sammy. I know you feel quite passionately yeah, about definitely. this. I think what's worrying when I hear, you know, stories like this, I just think eugenics. And we all know how that, you know, went. And it's scary as someone who um, is a disabled woman, you know, growing up with my disability, living an amazing life, I wouldn't change who I, or who I am for the world. However, having said that, I would like to start a family one day and I've got a 50-50 chance of my child being the carrier of my condition. Now, my condition can at times be extremely, extremely painful. I've had over 200 fractures in my life. You know, as a, as a child, as a baby, I would be carried around on a pillow. No one, no wonder I'm a drama queen, you know, <laughs> starting life like that. Um, so, so I think I would, if I, if I were to have a child, I think I would get that child, the, 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 my eggs tested. However, I would like to have a child, you know, naturally, and I would like to adopt a child who has my condition, who's already in this world, because I just think if they're already here, yeah. Yeah. I'll be the best mother yeah, to you're that the, child. Yeah, you understand it. You know? yeah. Yeah. You talk about your, your conditions, Sam, and you, you've, you, you're very kind of stoic, and, and, but you've suffered an awful lot of yeah. pain throughout your life. It's almost like you, you block it out yeah. and then you move on to the next, Definitely. the next stage. But you have had terrible times of, yeah. of complete pain. And I guess some may argue then, as a parent, you always want the best for your unborn child. And so if you think you can take that pain away, potentially, from them, would you consider that? You know, oh, is that something I, you take I on? I don't think so. You know, it's, you know? Like the, um, it's like the cancer gene, you know, that's in my family, somewhere in my mm. family, you know, yeah. um, with the breast cancer. And if, they, if I got pregnant, you know, and they said, look, we could sort it so that the... the Vetus wouldn't carry that gene. Of course, I would do it. I wouldn't want. Oh, you, wouldn't you, want you the probably about this morning. You said something which really kind of stuck in my head when you said, if you had a child who and you did pass on the condition, and yeah. that child went through all the same pain and operations that you've been through, and they actually were just looking at you and say, you chose, you chose, you yeah. chose for me to go through you this. Yeah. My uh, parents didn't know that I was going to be no. born like this. Yeah. You know, yeah. but if my if my teenage, you know, child or, or whatever said. You put me through this pain. I don't know whether I could live with that. But mm. but that's why I think in that respect this is fantastic um, yeah. Yeah. science. Mm -hmm. It's when it turns into then parents picking. Well, I want yeah. blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah. yeah. The key it, word it, is it, ethics. Yes, isn't it? Ethics, absolutely. It has to be ethical. So but when like... you're just doing it to get an aesthetically yeah, yeah. Like, like all things, at, you open the door slightly yeah. and people will always force the How door open for it more yeah. and it will be, I want to only have a boy or I want to only have yeah. a girl or Which I want to Which is happening eyes. in America, obviously, at the minute. You yeah. can do that. You can, mm. you can pay to choose for the sex of your child, which mm. you can't do here. But I guess once that door opens, like you say, you wonder how things can how be interpreted by further generations as well. Mm. Like, like We all might think one thing and in 20 years' time, people... It's, it's, of course, you just go and you do these things. Mm. And so it's how far the boundaries get pushed all of the time with it. But do you think if no one has suffered or if no one has any pain, then what is the point of life? Yeah. If we, we were all healthy all the time, mm. then will we actually value our lives? Yeah. Mm. Do we all want to live in a world of beautiful Love Island people? Is that the way <laughs> this is going? I mean, it does make you think, though, doesn't it? <laughs> It does make me think. <laughs> it does. It's kind of it's like this this striving for perfection mm. all of the time, and sometimes maybe things just are not within our control. Mm. Um, and this, uh, goodness knows what's going on in my body at the minute. <laughs> so you you just you just don't know. But it's an interesting viewpoint from you, yeah. I think, Sam, because you've lived it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. and, and it's it, not an easy decision. It's not easy for me to say that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm. No, of course. Do you, do you think I, that a lot of people would criticise yeah, you for saying that? I think so. On, on what basis? I think because they would see it as me devaluing my own life. You know, um, but there's, it needs to be it needs to be taken on a base to base situation. Yeah, absolutely. Said, you know, some conditions. You know, you don't experience pain. Yeah. Uh, it's completely different to to what I've experienced. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, we uh, asked you at home as well, do you think it's morally wrong to change your child's genes to avoid disability or so-called imperfections? 53% said yes, it's morally wrong, with 47% saying no, so it's relatively close. Oh, wow.